CT, you look like 20 years younger, bro. Thank you. Yeah, what's the, why'd you do that? What's the deal? I had to reset. It was no shave November. You want the opposite one. <laughs> <laughs> reset Before we get going, CT. This is for oh, you, buddy. Geez, look at oh, this. from Steph and I from the pro. Damn. It's good stuff. Dow Winnie. Never had this. This looks classy as fuck. Yeah, we're going to have to add that to the collection. Thank you so much. Of course, brother. We appreciate all you do. Yeah, it looks high quality, dude. All right, we're live. We're back with another episode of Happy Power. Finally, by popular demand. We were at the American Pro, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we legit had people asking, when's the next podcast? And here we are. So we got... You know, Mikey Poles from the from the home base here, and Debo as well from the home base. We obviously had a few other athletes from the Power Build team there, but these are uh, these are the OGs. So we figured it'd, it would only be right if we had you two on. So I appreciate you guys jumping on the pod. No problem at yeah. all. Happy to be here, hey, man. Yeah. And we got his first appearance on the pod, and possibly the YouTube channel. I don't even know if you've been on the YouTube yet, but. We got uh, my older brother, Jobin. <laughs> you, you came out first, remember? Um, he got more of the DNA in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, he, he just just finally joined the team not that long ago, so he's here at the gym, which has been great. And we're taking this whole thing to another level now. So I decided not to wear a hat so you could tell us apart. Yeah, some, yeah we've been getting uh, "Are you twins?" a lot. I guess we do kind of look alike. We are brothers, but I don't know. I'm the younger one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I've been getting the older one most of the time. And you're the more handsome one. Thank you. Sue forgot to put my makeup on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a little tired. (laughs) But, yeah, I mean, obviously we kick it off right away. Let's just jump right into the American Pro just to kind of preface some of the performances by these guys. Mikey, had your, you had your best day overall, right? I know we wanted yeah. a little more, but it was still your best day overall. Eight for nine, PR total, yep. couple P, uh, PR, PR squat and deadlift. And deadlift. Yeah. Debo, PR total, also eight for nine, right? Yeah. You both eight went for eight nine. for nine? Yeah. And uh, first 2K total for this young man's career, which we knew he was capable of for a little while, but this is like I feel like the first meet. I feel like last meet, you did really well. It kind of came together, but I think we knew there was obviously a lot more. This one, it really came together for the 2022 total. And what was the dots? Crazy dots. 570. 570, yeah. 570 even. So I guess uh, first let's just jump in with you guys. And what was your what was your thoughts on the American Pro? It was obviously a very, very hype meet, a lot of uh, expectations going into it. What would you guys think? I'll let you start it off. All right, I'll kick it off. So uh, – The production value was pretty outstanding. I've never competed in something like that before. I knew it was going to be big, but I didn't quite realize the scope of it. And it kind of took me by surprise in the fact that I had to, like, calm myself down, especially for squats. Uh, I was, like, dizzy and nervous, and that's never happened. Typically, I'm hitting salts. I'm getting fired up. And for my last two squat attempts, literally, I was telling Colin and uh, my fiance Steph, to, like, calm me down. Like, no music, no salts. And, uh... I had to like kind of like settle into the meat and uh by the time squats was over i was good to go and i started enjoying it more but uh yeah the the atmosphere was just it completely blew me away i agree i mean i couldn't say anything more different i mean the production i was there during the first american pro and it was amazing and i didn't i didn't think they would do it but they did the production was just like out of this world the athletes did amazing things there were so many world records broken um, I had the time of my life, even after I competed, um, I was a little anxious as well, just because of like so much going on at the same time. They had us walking out. Um, they didn't have a red carpet this time, but yeah. they had flashing lights under the ground. It was just, it was just a lot. Wouldn't say too much, but it it was a lot going on. And as an athlete, like we had to adjust and adapt to it. Yeah, no, I think it definitely added. Uh another variable for the athletes i think everyone's like oh american pro i want to go and compete but then you don't realize like yeah it's fun it's exciting but with that comes those extra variables extra pressure there's camera guys following you around for the live stream then on the third deadlift you're walking down this fucking digital light 
red smoke. carpet smoke machine smoke machine <laughs> your own song that you picked out like there's obviously added pressure and that's like any big meet but obviously i think that's that's why we all kind of get into it you want to start you know locally go to the next level which the american pro they definitely made a platform for that next level i thought it was sick i thought it was like production value maybe as good as i've ever seen mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. gino was there Gino. That, was a, that was that was a huge man. huge yeah, upgrade yeah. from one, uh, American Pro one to two. Yep. Spotters and loaders. Spotters and are loaders. The best I've ever like. That's not even a debate. The yeah. best I've ever had. I don't oh, think they, they slid. They once. danced. Yeah. The oh, they were yeah. competition. They were, they were it. Yeah. hype. They were hype. I will give it to them. They were monsters. And on top of that, the one thing I really appreciated too was. Not gonna lie, at first I was just like I was kind of bored because I was in the warm up room. I'm like trying to get my guys ready. Most of my job is in the warm up room, mm -hmm. and they had people back there. They had crews loading plates, asking us what we needed next. They were keeping like a nice rhythm of of who was next in, in the rotation, or, you know. And they had they had two monoliths back there. They had three combo racks, so there was never like overcrowding. It was that was flawless. I thought that was flawless. Very very impressive. And that's obviously pretty rare. Usually they don't have, like, teams of spotters and loaders also in the warm-up area. That, like, even the even as a coach, I was just kind of, like, had my hands in my pockets, like, yeah, he needs this next. He needs this <laughs> next. And they were doing it. But that was impressive. And uh, all the people involved, I thought they were really cool. Man, shout like, out to Garrett Fear. Like, yeah. Live stream-wise, like, going back, I enjoyed watching it all over again. Typically, you don't watch – uh something that you already replayed and you done um but just to hear like the commentating and like him having fun and just being able to relate it, it, it was amazing he did his thing just having him in part of the production is a plus yeah no it definitely makes a big difference i mean i'm sure people listening to this i'm sure you guys have seen live streams before and they could be a little lackluster at times <laughs> So having somebody that, you know, is excitable, someone is with, very knowledgeable. Someone with character. Someone with character. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. I mean, I would say most of the live streams I've seen, they fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> His, like, or when he's on it, it's very good. I thought all of them did well. And obviously they were all, like, elite-level lifters that were doing it. So oh. it was cool to kind of get insight from them during the whole the whole meet. But – yeah, it was fun. I mean, it's always nice, too, when they got, a, like, a bar right there. You could go out and grab yourself a, a cold brewski. Oh, yeah. Mikey was getting lit. He had the <laughs> pre-third the pre -third deadlift whiskey shot is still undefeated, I believe. Uh -huh. It's still undefeated. It In you. competition, I'm 2-0. Oh. It helped you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I've done it, like, three times. I've literally – those are, like, always the deadlifts I've hit. On my third attempt. Yeah. There's something about it, dude. It's just like the change of pace. I needed the change of pace. Like the salts just weren't doing it like they normally were. And it was just something about the whiskey that just made me like just light up. I'm like, all right, I'm in it. Let's go. <laughs> it's this like a switch. Yeah. 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 Not that we recommend that for everyone. Obviously, drink responsibly. Be, be of age. Yeah, be of age first and foremost. But See, that's far different from what I do. I just stopped drinking alcohol during prep like – you know, I don't even take a shot. It's it, I just contain myself all the way through. And if then, I really, if I really feel like I deserve it, I'll, I'll give it my best on meet day and I'll earn it. And you definitely did. Hence the five. You earned dots. it. And then, yeah. that, and then that night, uh, we can't talk about that. <laughs> he it, drank the henny I mean? bottle just <laughs> like it was Gatorade, dude, was straight to the from, head. Uh, I did that with the makers. Too. You hammered the makers. Oh yeah. Well deserved. I mean, obviously the post meet was fun. We could get into that, but. What do you guys think maybe made the difference? And again, like no meat preps are perfect. I know there's going to be things that you're like, shit, this could have went better. But mm -hmm. is there is there one or two things that you guys could pinpoint pre American Pro that maybe led to that performance? I mean, the thing with me is like, I'm so used to training at. I wasn't going to use the word, but shitty ass gyms, <laughs> and like gyms was like lack of appreciation for like athletes. Um, so moving up here, it's just like every single meet that I've done so far, it's like 1920, 1945, 2K. I'm able to get better because I'm training on better equipment. And I know like social media wise, I kind of like lacked a little bit. I know like people are like, yeah, post more, post more. It's just like just getting my head in the game and like getting away from like some of the more trendy stuff that 
people look for and what's pushed on social media, right? Yeah. I can't like deadlift in a suit and do all that stuff when the goal is to give it the best that I have. So I've just been locking in as much as possible, getting the work done and continuing to push that on my page. Like, you know, a lot of people want to be good and they want the sponsorships. They want all these different things from the sport. But what time and effort do you really put in to deserve those things? Yeah. They want it without the actual work. They want it because they have an account on Instagram. Doesn't yeah. do it. Yeah. So balance for me, uh, just being able to balance. Now off season, I can at least bullshit a little bit and have some fun. But you know, I kind of noticed you sent me my program last night, so I know you you're telling me to get my head back in the game. So we'll do that for a couple more weeks, and yeah, we'll start prepping for the next one. I labeled his program IPF champ, by the way. Hey. Well on the way. We're, we're giving it all that we have, and that's all. Whatever comes from it, comes from it. I wish everyone well. Hell yeah. But we're also coming for you. <laughs> Listen, I, I know Debo puts the work in, and out of watching anybody compete besides my brother, of course, mad respect, OG. He's oh, my brother. Oh, I'm proud of him. Fun. If anybody else that I watch compete, I'm very, very proud of Debo. Class it, act. I have nothing but respect. Thank you, thank you. He thank does you. it right. I I, en I enjoy watching Debo compete. I watch him in the gym, put the hours in, and he deserves everything that he gets. Hey, it's a team effort. I mean, yeah, I put in the work, but I have a team around me that continuously helps me get better. You know, as sponsors, I have a great coach that understands anything that I throw at them, you know, life happens. Like, I feel like a lot of coaches, like, like, yeah, yeah, no excuses, blase, blase. No, like, people have lives, people have families, people have jobs. Like, there are things that happen and you have to help them adapt as well too. And, you know, there are perceived barriers as well that you have to help your athletes work through. I feel like a lot of coaches lack that and lack empathy and understanding. So, thanks to have a coach, uh, you know, since what, 2018? has been able to like work through all my bullshit with me from school and just life and being able to, you know, grow as a person. Well, I know you since what, tw I was like 20, 21, yeah. I'm 27 now, you know, it was a lot of growing up and, you know, I always looked at you as like a role model and a mentor as well. So I'm glad to have you. Damn guys. That's really sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, you know, I touched on it a little bit on the Instagram post, but that's one of the biggest things I think me and Debo have the advantage on a lot of people is I know him so well. I know his mentality so well. Been We've been doing this for five plus years. So like some of those lifts that we even took during the meet, no other like coach makes those calls and no other coach probably listens to the athlete in those moments other than us, I think, because like we just know each other so well. And that's what led to like, I feel like such a good performance and like mainly that third squad. You could even see like – what was Get. it the second squad? He kind of was like it was a little, little misgroove, a little slow, yeah. a and lot he, of slow actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he came up to the table and you're like, we're like, I don't know if he has any ten more in him, and you're like, oh, I just plugged them in. He's good to go. <laughs> yeah. And then he came out and killed the third one. I was like, holy. Hence Garrett's shit. Uh, yeah. Viral response. Yeah, yeah so. Garrett, obviously very knowledgeable in the sport. He's seen the second attempt and honestly just had a very honest reaction. When he came up, when Debo came up for his third and we jumped, what did we jump? 10, 10 kilos? Yeah, I think it was what? We did 722 and then we jumped to 738. Seven and a half yeah. kilos. So yeah. seven and a half kilos. If you, would have, if, if you guys would have seen that second attempt, you would have been on Garrett's side. It, it wasn't unwarranted. Yeah. Garrett was basically saying on his third attempt, like, this isn't a great call. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not even going to come out of the bottom. And uh, he, murdered he it. fucking crushes Killed it, me. made it look like an opener almost. And, again, it's just you have to know the athlete. You have to understand maybe, like, what happened on one attempt versus what can happen on the next attempt. Debo is a little different and, able, and, it, and he's able to kind of, like, flip the switch on the most important lifts. Like, you're going to get the best out of him when it matters the most. And some people are a little different. Some people fold under the pressure. Debo fucking elevates under the pressure, so – yeah, that was a cool moment. That was a fucking really cool moment. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think the second was that bad. I just didn't want to get red lights. That's all it was. So yeah. I was giving it all I had. Like, 
like, if I had to touch my fucking calves, that's what we were fucking doing. Yeah. But the third one was just like, you were like, oh, like, that was way there. So I was just, all right, we're going to cut it a little the bit. The third one went yeah. up easier than the first one. I was the like, third one's your what? best squat. Yeah. Like, it was beautiful. Yeah. Hey, glad it worked out. Road day 100. <laughs> what you got, Mike? What you got for, what do you think? And, 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 and people don't even know, like, did you even post that one squat video? No, not yet. That's what I, I mean. Will. So I will post it. it's funny because I just want to preface your, uh, you know, some of your keys before the meet. But like, Mikey had a great day, and it wasn't the best prep. Like things happen. Literally got folded up by what six forty. Yeah. Like just had a, had his belt blow off. It was like it wasn't strapped. Literally went down. Well, I don't know if we could plug that clip. If you want us to plug the clip in, yeah, we, could. we, we could, could plug yeah. the clip in. It was fucking 10 days out or something like 10, that. Yeah, it was, last it was supposed squat. to be the last heavy squat yeah. where we're kind of building confidence. It goes literally all but as bad as it can. But Mikey still has the best meat he's ever had. Didn't you tweak something? Uh, yeah, I kind of tweaked like my left elbow a little. And then two days later, to add to it, I failed my last heavy bench because I – I wanted. I was so desperate for a win. I went for a PR attempt, which that's like literally the golden rule of not to do anything. And I did it anyway, and I failed it. And bench was already horrible as it was. So I'm just like, oh man, how am I gonna dig myself out of this? All prep, I was dealing with a quad issue, uh, neck issue, which I'm still dealing with. My neck's still kind of messed up. Um, and it, like th- those are like the little things, right? Like a lot of people deal with like little things, but it's like also like this was the most pressure I've ever been under for a meet, heaviest training numbers ever for a meet. And sure, my, my squat strength wasn't where I wanted it to be. Like, I, was, I want a 705 squat. I ended up with a 672, which was still a PR. But it's like, we realized where my – Colin, as, as a great a coach as he is, realized where my strength levels were, and we squeezed every single kilo out of what I could do on the day. And I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the attempt selection by him and his knowledge. But then also I'm proud of myself for just, like, battling. Like I just battled, yeah, yeah and uh, and I competed, and it's like, dude, a near nearly perfect day. I should have got my last bench. I don't. That was kind of like a weird thing. I, yeah. I was like, man, my bench felt the best it has all prep. Yeah, and then just third one just kind of stalled out. But uh, like, dude, how can you be mad by adding like thirty pounds onto your meat total PR? Yeah, after that kind of a prep, it's like I can't even be upset. Like, obviously, I had pie in the sky goals. Yeah, but dude. Eight for nine, come on. I know. Eight for nine, 1,800-pound total. I know we wanted the 500 thoughts, which were right there. But, nice. yeah, I mean, you literally had, like, all of the potential excuses were kind of there. Like, you could have, like, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened to lead to maybe, like, not an ideal meet day. But you kind of overcame all of those, which is probably the most impressive thing to me because being a coach – and I've worked with so many damn athletes over the years. Like, unfortunately, you know, there is some of those clients that they kind of let those things overcome them and they don't have the meat they want, or maybe they don't even show up to the meat at all. They, they bail on the meat, you know, and again, sometimes that is going to be the right move, but there's a difference between, you know, these guys and a lot of other people. And, it, and a lot of it just comes out of the mentality, just having the mental toughness to be like, you know what, this this day didn't go well, this week didn't go well, this block didn't go well, but I'm gonna still just fucking keep going into the gym and working every single damn day, and then they have the performances they do. So, nice little takeaway for you guys. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, overall though, we can uh. I think we can say the America Pro was a success. Just give a little shout out to some of the other guys. Jawan. Yeah. What a fucking awesome. day. This dude's fucking He's built different. He's Yeah. What was this? Do we know his total off top offhand? It was it's like nineteen something. Nineteen, like mid nineteens, right? Yeah. I think it was like mid nineteens at at one eighty one. Yeah. I believe it was an all time world record total, That's right? It was, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he broke it. All-time world record total, so that is against or uh, across all feds. Just straight up the highest total at that weight class ever, which is insane. I think he just topped out John, right? Yeah, I believe so. And then Dots was, like, above 600 as well. Yeah, like, absolutely yeah. just. Andy was robbed on his third deadlift. Honestly, yeah, the third deadlift, very, very controversial. I mean, from my view, it looked great. I, I don't know. It's always you, you can only see from one angle, you know, obviously, but the judges – have different views. I don't know. It looked like a tough call. I, I just – it was hard to see that one not count. But uh, Fernando, 
This guy. Beast. Warpath. That's my dude. boy. Dude. dude. Fernando. Hold on. Jawan has 620.5. Yeah. 620 dots? 620 dots. That is disturbing. Bench 500. Squad is 778.2. Well, more in the tank. Yeah. He just took yeah. 800 yeah. for a ride 805. the other day. It was very and close. And it almost went up, too. It was above parallel. Yeah. So. He's hitting 800. Yeah. Man has a promising future. No doubt. Well, it's crazy. He just keeps getting stronger, too. Yeah. You're like, he's already, like, an absolute freak, but just keeps getting stronger. It's crazy. Fernando, too, though. I mean, people, I think. You know what's crazy? This man never took second place. Who? Juwan? Yeah. Really? Ever? Ever. He's either got disqualified or took first place. <laughs> That's Jesus. insane. I've never seen that before. That's kind of wild. Whoa. Yeah. He's competed a lot. What a yeah. stat. I didn't realize that. Stat line. Be like, yo, check out my open powerlifting profile. One. Yeah. Truly That's undefeated. A He's a <laughs> yeah. freak It's like the athlete. John Jones of powerlifting. Yeah, freak for real, athlete. yeah. A lot of respect. Back on Fernando. Yeah. The first time I met Fernando was just at this last summer show down here at Power Build KOP. And that's another class act. I have mad respect for that kid. Uh, strong as fuck. Um, he knows how to flip the script. Oh, like, man. He's, like, genuine and a nice guy. And then, like, you see him move some weight. Like, it's, like, gentle giant for real. Yeah. That's I've never truth. seen anyone fucking deadlift 900 pounds like that. Yeah. Like, no. like, truly – like an empty bar. And yeah. he, he's yeah. just, this is just the beginning for him. Yeah, he's, he's kinda, got a lot in the tank. He's kind of new to it all. Yeah. I feel like. yeah. The best way to I describe think, him is a monster. He's I feel monster. like he did three meets in the span of a month. Yeah, yeah he's been competing yeah. a lot too, which is impressive. But I know he's got another big year coming up, mm -hmm. traveling meets overseas. He's getting invited to a lot of like these big, big overseas meets, which is sick. Yeah. And I literally just, yeah, he's, he's, dude, sky's the limit. That dude, I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. He's, like, got the perfect build. Yep. He just, just keeps getting what do stronger. We, what do we see him at the American Pro standing there? And we were laughing. We're like, man, take off your shoulder pads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His back was that wide. It looked like literally. the man was wearing an NFL set of shoulder pads. For real. Yeah, that's exactly how he's built. It looks like he always has on, like, football shoulder pads. That's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. But eh, that's, I guess that's what it takes to deadlift 950. Bro, the momentum is there. A, a K, K is plus, coming. Yeah. yeah. Funny how we said that yeah. together. I, I can see it now. Hopefully he does it here first. I want to see it. That would be crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, next year we're, I don't know if, well, we'll see. I'll, I'll wait to announce that. But we got some big events coming up next year. That's for sure. A lot of big events, big meets. Uh, with the new gym opening, we're going to be able to kind of open the floodgates to events we've been limited here at kop unfortunately just due to our lease we can only have so many events a year warrington we can run monthly events if we want so we're going to be doing a lot of cool shit i can't wait wait Bring until back. you see this facility that's all i'm gonna say world class elite it will rank world in class. the world no joke prestige worldwide prestige worldwide why why, why? <laughs> Who else we got? Uh, Dan Grigsby, bro. Yeah, Dan Griggs. Is that the heaviest opener deadlift in history? It's has, gotta be. Yeah. To be what was it? Nine fifty. Nine ninety. Nine ninety. Nine ninety. God, what? Opener. What are we doing, dude? <laughs> what are we doing? It's just getting better and better. You know? That's disturbing. And yeah. honestly, he had an insane squat too. He smoked eight oh four squat, mm -hmm. right? Yep. He was surprised when he came. I know. Up. He like hit it. Yeah. He's like. Oh shit! He's like Dude, that looked like an opener. Too. Yeah, for, it was like his best attempt. It was yeah. like his third was like his best. Uh, they were all pretty smooth, but yeah, Dan's a monster. Bench is coming along, and then just a couple tough calls. I mean, on the on the dead, he went what nine ninety to what ten fifty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. yeah, it was a thousand forty six. Yeah, I mean, you can't, I you know. He's taking a shot at pretty much everything there. I think, like, at that point, if he if he does pull the 1046, I think he's probably maybe going to go really crazy. He wanted five. Yeah. He wanted the five. Yeah. But, you know, he'll be back. I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. I know he's recently, I think, is he is he still in the military? Or no, he, he, so he, he just got out. just got out, like, the week of the pro. That's what Shout I mean. Shout out to another veteran, though. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's Not crazy. respect. He was active duty, so it's like all active yeah, duty, man. That's it's crazy. physically that's demanding, crazy. stressful. They're they're you know on a tight schedule, so I can only see him starting to elevate, which is just I don't. Need, 
one I word how you freak. Do that. Yeah. Freak, freak. Freak, man. That's crazy. Also one of the best fucking people in the sport. Oh, Dan man. Griggs is my he's a top three powerlifter for me just because of the guy he is. He is literally the coolest fucking dude. Yep. Who else did we have? 1,074. Yeah, 1,074 was his best ever. Who else? Did, was there somebody? Dak. Dak's from the Dak. gym. Dak had a good meet. I think Dak did, what, seven for nine? What did he do? I know he missed that third squat. Maybe eight for nine. He might have went eight for nine as well. Seems to be the trend. But I think that was a PR was total for him, even yeah. with the missed squat. But he did really well. I mean, he, lo he, looked, yeah, he looked locked in. Xavier, yeah, Xavier, man, Xavier scared me a little bit. He came out, he missed his first two yeah. squats, came back like a fucking G, smoked it on his third. It was never an issue of moving the bar. It was he was getting some, you know, tough calls on depth, and that's the name of the game, though. At those bigger yeah. meets, they're gonna make it a point to be extra strict. Yep. And unfortunately, he was just kind of the target on that day. I feel like because I was looking at him like, damn, these are tough. These are tough calls. And on his third, he just fucking buried it. It was like a fucking ass-to-grass squat. But he smoked it, got it on the board, and the rest of the day went really well. I think his bench is – I think he went three for three. And I think I think he – I don't know if he missed a lift after yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was good. That, his deadlift was like – Smoked. That's his thing. Yeah. 750. Yeah. 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 So huge day for him after – man, rocky start, dude. And I've been there, man. I, I had a meet where I was 0 for 2 on my squats on depth and like – up until that point, I had literally never missed depth. So I, I knew exactly how he was feeling because you could, like, see it in his eyes. Like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, but got on the third. So that was awesome. I was glad to see that. It's not how you start. It's how you finish, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Johnny and Kaufman. Johnny. Too. Yeah, Johnny. He had a hell of a day. Another another dude. Injuries, and too. He, yeah. yeah. He had from, from a big injury. Yeah. 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 He had a hell of a day, though. I mean – Always fun seeing him do well. He's he's just always like he he just keeps getting stronger. You see what Jim Yolo pull was? Yeah, and I seen I think that's is that what he went for in the meet on his third? I don't think that much. No? Uh, he had eight fifty in his house, right? Yeah. Something around there. Yeah. yeah. I think he might have went I, I know he, he went big on his third attempt. I don't I thought it was like eight twenty or eight thirty. Maybe, or maybe. But yeah, what, eight fifty in the gym? Just another fucking young kid who's gonna end up deadlifting 900 pounds somehow. I don't. I just don't. I don't know what's going it's on. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Human beings are getting stronger and stronger. It it's is crazy. wild. It's crazy. Literally, when I first started, 700 was like a big number. That's what like a lot of people were striving for. Mm -hmm. Then it became eight. You know, became eight slowly but surely. Dude, now it's fucking nine. Yep. We've somehow like. Eight had its run for like four months, and then everyone's like, "Nah, fuck eight, nine. and people just started hitting nine. Dude, I just uh, hit seven. That's not true. It's still eight. I, I mean, mean, eight is many, still like how many people were pulling nine? Not many, but like, dude, even back in the day, eight was what nine is now for sure, well, and and seven is lift, what eight is now. The heavier lifters are hitting nine like that. Like, yeah, I think like under a hundred k, like. Not, not many of us are. No, but yeah, also it's still untested versus untested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But across the board, I mean, numbers are just continuing to become, yeah. you know, more elevated. Talent pools growing. You're just seeing, yeah, you're just seeing people continuing to see what others can do, and are like, well, all right, I can beat that. Back in the day, what a 400 some pound bench press was amazing. Now yeah. 500 is the, yeah. the new yeah. number. Yep. Same it's thing crazy. with bench. I remember back in the day when I first hit four. I was so excited because, like, I literally only knew, like, two people in my life who had hit four. Yeah. And at this time, now, I wasn't as into powerlifting. But um, even back then, when I was when I first started competing and I was hitting, like, I think 420 in my first meet, like, I had one of the biggest fucking benches at the meet. You know what I mean? It was – and there was, like – there was a decent amount of competitors there. But, yeah, five's the, new, five's the new four, man. And then on squat, it's like – I remember – even like 600, I was like, 600 is good, right? 600 is good. Well, let's go back to bench, though. Like, look at Julius Maddox. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, people hitting eight instead of just like seven. There was only like a few people that have ever done it. And then this dude just goes and like, nah, we're going to eight. Yeah, we're just going to bench with people deadlift now. Like, it's, a, it's insane. It's insane. It is wild. The norms are crazy. It is wild. I, I like, I wonder, like, in another five years, Will we be sitting and having the conversation where, like, 
who do you, who else is hitting a thousand pound deadlift? Like, is it going to get to that point, I or do you it think it's just going to be where we're at now, but more people can do it? I feel like the fact that we have so many younger kids starting early, yeah. like the potential is there, and that's literally what it is: is consistency. Yeah. So. Hey, but that's a I battle in of itself. Yeah, because right? like a lot of these young kids that are getting into it early and seeing all the success, it's like, okay, they're still like high school into college. Like, oh. can they keep this going when they have to get you know a real job and they have you know all of a sudden they find that girl and they want to start a family? Like, yeah. can they keep that discipline? Can they keep that you know that motivation to inevitably hit like you know the one K or whatever you're going for? No, yeah, that's yeah. the biggest thing, dude. Longevity. It's I say it to like multiple clients a week. Longevity. What do you know? Debo just hit 2K, but he's been doing it now competitively for five plus years. More than that, probably like six plus years. Mikey, I'm six hitting years. 18, uh, 1,800, six years. Like, it takes a long time. You can see that initial growth, but it's really like who's willing to stick around? Who's yeah. willing to actually like put in the work year after year after year? That's what separates sometimes the good from the great. But it'll be interesting to see where some of these young guns. Uh, end up yeah are you thinking about competing again in the near future <sighs> yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna definitely bring it back i don't know we gotta next do year meet together come oh, on man. like those were like yeah. the best oh times you yeah. didn't have to worry about handling me we were just in there together just having fun yeah. like, especially sick. you and i we're tied now dead even tie on total we do we do have dead even total so, yeah i just it. i i'm at this point one of the the Things I'm debating is like I just don't know like what Fed I want to compete in. Time frame wise, I don't know. To be honest, I'm probably looking at like mid next year to like late summer, early fall. I think would be probably ideal. And I don't know. I I'm I don't know. After doing it for so long, I want to do a meet that like we're all maybe not we're you know it doesn't even have to be like us three all have to do it, but like the team is doing, you know what I mean? Like when we were doing the USPA Dude, Nats and we roll out awesome. like 20 deep, mm -hmm. they were that's fun, what man. was fun for me. Cause like, yeah. I don't know. It just, it just made it more fun, man. As, as life goes on, things more and more projects come up, get busier and busier. It's like, you want something like to kind of like really give you that nudge to get back into like mm -hmm. competition mode. Got to so. throw down again. Gotta no, throw yeah, down. I'll, I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. I just want to do it right. I don't want to just come back and, you know, competing's fun, but I, I'm going to come back and, like, make a statement. That's just kind of who I am. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Will. So we'll be back. We'll be back soon Hell enough. Yeah. Strongest gym owner on the East Coast. I got to beat out Tang. Yeah, he's got me beat right now. <laughs> we need a 500-pound deadlift for you. Or, bench, uh, bench, 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 yeah. Bench, bench. Yeah. This year was supposed to be the 500-pound the bench. Tweaked my pack multiple times, not to cry too much, but I've had a couple little setbacks. But we're 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 gonna be uh we're gonna be right there. It's just the body adapting, dude. Dude, it's just yeah. yeah. It's just the body adapting. He's gotta break it before it rebuilds stronger. <laughs> so, it works. What for happens me. when you have giant pecs? You need a bra to support them. Uh, hey, I need a bionic <laughs> bra at this point, man. I need something. Uh, I just need to train smarter. I need to stop rushing. A lot of times people will probably see my posts and I like say something that's like motivating. It's it's honestly, it's not even for you guys actually. I'm telling it to myself. It's literally like I need to stop fucking making excuses and like, oh, I'm busy or I have like limited time. No. You're a busy man. We're all busy. Everyone's busy. Everyone has things going you're on. You're busy is different though. Yeah. It's, I know you're being modest. I know, it, but it's like I, I could I've still do things better. i put the dedication in like you. Yeah, I, but. I'm proud of you. I, I can't believe you created it. this. Appreciate For that. Real. We got something great going on right now. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate all the compliments, guys. I you didn't see, have to do I this. I didn't tell him to do this. Real. I'm going to talk some shit. Don't worry. <laughs> no. Mikey, you want to do a shot? Yeah, man. Yeah, why don't you guys take a shot? Do a shot with you. You got that's, you already got that? You need yeah. something new? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monkey shoulder, makers? You uh, want to? Uh, I'm, I'm out for makers for a while. I need a break from that. Get a little monkey shoulder. I'll that's quality. giving me some PTSD, dude. Let me cheer Mikey. That was full makers. whenever I started, by the way, and that's pretty much what I did. That's the from the American Pro. <laughs> Not all that, but it, literally I had, a, I think, at least half of it in a, in a couple hours. The Henny didn't make it back. <laughs> yeah, Debo clobbered that. <laughs> That's all this left. Mikey. <laughs> Mikey crossed out makers and put Mikey's mark on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Destroyed it. Yeah, that's true. 
That was fun. Cheers. Cheers, Mikey. I would love a shot right now, guys. Don't think I'm I'm a quitter, but I, I do got to train. I'm trying to make that comeback. I'm trying to make that comeback and do it right. I already trained. I'm good. I'm good yeah. for the day. I think you'd do better if you did a shot for real tonight. <sighs> Not when it's going to be squats, and I know it's going to be high reps because I'm doing the fucking Powerball AI, and it's got me in some fucking hypertrophy bullshit. <laughs> little <laughs> little plug for Powerball AI. If you guys need any programming and you want it individualized at the most affordable rate, make sure you try out the Powerball app. It takes care of all your training needs. Try the free trial. No try joke. the free trial today. If you guys are plateaued, start the climb again for real. It's a program built by a Terminator to turn you into a Terminator. Mm. That 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 could be our next promo, dude. Maybe we get maybe bring t Terminator into it. We did the uh, Matrix vibes, dude, for sure. Some kind of like uh, what, what a Skynet like kind of theme yeah. to it. AI, because that's not what get, it's all about. AI taking over. Yeah, right? no, it is. Yeah. yeah, we got a lot of cool features on there, guys. Make sure you check it out. Sue, plug the link in the uh, bio or the description. Anything coming up? Anything coming up you're excited about? I know obviously we're fresh off the pro, but I just I need think... to figure out my next meet, dude. Like I'm kind of getting like a little bummed out because I don't know. Like, dare I make my return to like USAPL or IPF? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, stiff could... bar deadlift doesn't really thrill me, but bro, I did it in a suit, and I'm like, bro, this feels so much <laughs> easier. Like, Kabuki bar is so much harder than any other bar I ever used. Like, I could easily put on 20 extra pounds on a stiff bar but like. you're mixed grip conventional and i'm hook grip yeah. sumo and that's like built for the kabuki yeah. bar like it's a cheat mm. code mm. it just depends mikey you're built different. and i think the way that you <laughs> pull i don't think it would actually matter that much i think it would just be a little bit of a transition phase yeah i'm not like i don't have that crazy high hip position like a lot of people yeah. do I, i'm a, a lot more of like a bent over kind of sumo puller but now you've learned patience off the ground you're oh fucking... dude that's the other thing real quick the deadlifts at the pro was my most technically sound deadlifts I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I was patient. My lockouts were crisp. Typically at like maximum effort, my issue is uh, my knees will kind of come unlocked, and which causes the bar to whip and kind of pull me forward. Yeah. Dude, there was not. It was it was smooth from the second I started pulling. Locked out the knees, got the shoulders back. I was I was like, damn, why can't I pull like this all the time? It was great. <laughs> it's good good time for it to click. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't know. We'll have to see. I feel like there's a lot of uh, moving pieces right now in uh, the powerlifting world. I don't know. None of us have really ever been, like, loyal to one fed. So it's like, nope. I don't know. We'll see where, uh, we'll see where the excitement is. Maybe go there. I don't know. I'm, I'm obviously, like, trying to get Debo go powerlifting America so he can become an IPF world champion. It just, it just feels like it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah. World right. champ to the resume. It sounds good. Sounds good. Highest yeah. ever drug tested dots. Yeah. People think that that was your that was your peak, and it wasn't. Not even uh, close, dude. Felt Not even close. close. Felt like I had more on squats, had more on deadlifts. Way more on bench. Did you hit five? Oh yeah. Uh, bench, I was slipping. Like bench felt a little rough. I just meant like your capability. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need more solid training. I'm pretty sure I have uh, another good meet in the wraps in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Sue got kicked out. <laughs> we'll leave We'll uh, leave that at that, but he got kicked out. Too, too, uh, too much of a sharpshooter, they said, I think, was the feedback they, he got. They uh, caught the best cameraman in the biz. I don't know. I think they, he was intimidating they didn't like people. They didn't like it. <laughs> it's just he's a presence everywhere he goes. Yeah, I man. American Pro does have to next year. They have the payouts have to be equal on both sides. Like if you're gonna have drug tested there yeah. and non tested, like the payouts have to be the same. I mean, like, what was the point of having two different if like you know one is respected more than the other? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. That was uh, that was a little different. I know they didn't do the payouts until after the meet. Which was also interesting, but you know, coming from coming from the perspective of like you know helping run meets and knowing what the cost can be, I do know they obviously probably had to see where numbers are at before they maybe could actually dedicate a certain amount of money to the payouts. But at the same time, as a lifter, if I'm you, fuck that. 
I don't know what I'm going into this shout, meet to shout win. Shout out to the vendors. Yeah, Took yeah. A punch in the mouth. Out there, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to all the vendors. I feel your pain. That's all I'm going to say on that. Yeah, but obviously it's always good to be there, support those meets, support Micah. He's one of the OGs in the sport. He always does an incredible job. He is a great guy. Nothing but love to the whole team that was able to put that meet on, honestly. Um, incredible job. A lot of meets can create hype, but don't live up to it. And I think, you know, they, they really did live up to it. So props to them. But, yeah, show the tested lifters some love, man. Come on. But I don't yeah, know. That's my only constructive criticism. That's about it. Yeah. Other than that, loved it. Yeah. All right, man. I, I think we keep this episode dedicated to the American Pro. I appreciate you guys reaching out and giving feedback that you wanted to br bring Happy Power back. And it wasn't going anywhere, but we've been busy. We've been doing a lot. We've been traveling. Sue's been all over the globe. Debo's all over the globe. So we're going to be back regularly. If I you feel guys like have any ideas, bring it to me. Yeah. I, I bring it up. I yeah. bring it up. Just was a big advocate to get the Happy Power podcast back for on. For so if you guys have suggestions, things you want us to talk about, again, any special guests, we have a lot of guests coming in. So we're going to actually try to line up more episodes with some of them. But again, if you have anyone in particular, any, uh, any feedback is always very, very welcome, good or bad. So you guys have any closing thoughts before we wrap this one up? Uh, yeah, let, let us know in the comments where Team Power Build should go for the next meet. Is it USBA? Is it uh, IPF? Is it WRPF? Let us know, and we'll roll up and, and win the meet. Hell yeah, I like that. I'm just going to show up and have fun. That's all you can expect from me. <laughs> as long as Garrett's there commenting, I'm pretty sure you guys will go ham in the comments. Hell yeah. Anything, Just? How was your first episode? You like it? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well this was fun i appreciate you guys coming on we will do it again very very soon make sure you guys subscribe click the notifications bell hit us with a comment and we will see you next time